Welcome to the Rental Property Owners Association of Kent County short instructional video on how to begin an eviction for non-payment of rent. The following presentation is informational only and should not be considered legal or financial advice. Please seek the counsel of an attorney for legal advice or a certified public accountant for financial guidance. Please also note that this presentation is only for evictions for non-payment of rent and should not be used for other types of evictions. There are four general steps to the eviction process for non-payment of rent. This presentation will cover step one, sending the proper legal notice to your tenant. The other steps include filing the complaint in district court, a court hearing, and if necessary, the physical eviction of your tenant from the rental unit. Starting an eviction for non-payment of rent requires the use of the proper form to send notice to the tenant. This form is called the Demand for Possession Non-Payment of Rent Form. This form is sometimes called a seven-day notice to quit for non-payment. However, the form you must use is the Demand for Possession for Non-Payment of Rent Form. Make sure you use the correct form. The Demand Form can be found in many locations, including the RPOA office in Grand Rapids, the Michigan Court Administrator's website, or the district court near you. Please keep in mind that some courts will not accept the forms that are completed online. Please check with your local district court to make sure. Let's get started by showing the actual form and how it's completed. I'm going to go to the State Court Administrator's website. This is a copy of the complete form. The top part of the form is for the tenant's mailing address. The second box on the form is for the landlord's name. The third box is for the amount of rent owed. And the fourth box underneath the landlord's name is for the actual description and address of the actual rental unit if it's different from the tenant's mailing address. The next box is for the date that the form is actually served. And the box below that is for the landlord's address and the landlord's telephone number. Let's take a closer look at the form. Here's that top box. Tenant's names we're using are Tom C. Tenant and Nancy Tenant. And you also notice that we put more language here called all other occupants. This is to ensure if there's anyone else living in the rental unit, they'll be evicted as well. And also note that we've used the tenant's mailing address, not the actual address of the rental unit. Here's the landlord's name. In this particular case, Landlord LLC. Also, here's the amount of rent owed. Here's the description of the actual rental unit. Here's the actual address and with a little bit more description, in this particular case, upper unit. As you can see, apartment one might be confused for the lower unit. So in this particular case, we've identified that it is the upper unit. You may need to know this at a future time when the actual physical eviction occurs so that the court officer goes to the correct unit. Here's the box for the date that the notice is actually served. Once again, here's the landlord's address and telephone number. You'll notice at the bottom of the form there's some additional blank lines and boxes. These do not need to be folded out at this time. They only need to be completed after the notice has been served and you're filing the complaint. There are several ways to serve a notice. The first is called personal service. As you might expect, this form must be served face-to-face -to, -face to a tenant whose name is on the lease. This does not mean sliding the form under the door or tacking it on the door. The form must be handed to the tenant personally. The second method of service is by first-class mail. For many reasons, this is the preferred method. The third method of service is called substitute service. This type of service is not recommended. When serving the notice, make sure you give the, tenant, the tenant's copy of the form. Let's take a quick look back at that form online. We'll scroll down a bit. This is the actual tenant's copy of the form. As you can see, it looks very similar to the other copy of the form, which was the court's copy and landlord's copy. But on the tenant's copy of the form, at the very bottom, you'll see some additional language that's different. This will give instructions to the tenant on what they can do once they've received the notice. So serving a notice by mail, you should use a certificate of mailing. This is not registered mail or certified mail. This is a small form obtained at the post office for a small fee. You'll complete the form by filling in the landlord's mailing address in the Receive From box 
and the tenant's address in the Address To box. The post office will then state, stamp, and date the form. This form can be used as proof of service in court. After serving the notice, you must wait nine days before continuing to step two, which is filing the complaint. When calculating the nine-day waiting period, you should keep in mind that Michigan law does not allow landlords to count any day following the date the notice was served, if that day is not a regular postal service delivery day. For example, if you mail a notice on Saturday, you cannot count Sunday as part of the nine-day waiting period. You must start counting the nine days beginning with Monday. This also applies to holidays such as Christmas. After you've served the notice, there's nothing left to do but wait. After the legal nine-day waiting period is up, you can move to step two by filing a complaint. Note, if you serve the notice personally, you could technically file a complaint after seven days. However, since some courts require a nine-day waiting period anyway, we recommend sticking with the nine-day period for all non-payment of rent evictions. Also, here's a word of caution. Make sure you count the number of days for the waiting period on the calendar to make sure you do not file the complaint too early. The complaint can be filed with the district court no earlier than the 10th day. For more information on how to complete an eviction or to get answers to other questions regarding rental property management in Michigan, feel free to call the RPOA at 1-800-701-7762 or visit us online at www.rpoaonline.org.